Hello, it's me, Pavlo, and uh, today we'll be talking about yet another interesting portable audio gadget. And uh, you can see this small box, but uh, everyone knows that good things come in small packages. And uh, it's a portable digital to noise converter made by Hydis uh, S9 Pro Plus model. So I reviewed previous generations of S9 and S9 Pro. So now they decided to add Plus, and the name is not really easy to pronounce. Uh, but uh, uh, but Hydis came with uh, another nickname for this model. They named it Martha. And it, it's not some just random female name they've selected, but it was the name of the last surviving species from the passenger pigeons, that kind of pigeons that were extinct 109 years ago. And once again, Hydis brings our attention to the ecological problems and the species extinction, so I think it's also an small uh, good deed from their side. And uh, what we have here, it's a portable digital tonal converter built with ES9038 Q2M, which makes it already pretty interesting because it's one of the best uh, portable digital tonal converters available. Also, it supports all that high resolutions up to DSD 512 and uh, 768 kHz for 32 bits. It's made from aluminium and uh, it delivers up to 180 mW for 32 ohms load from the balanced out. So, in terms of specifications, it's really good uh, model. And the uh, pre-order started uh, few days ago uh, and the uh, first 100 items uh, should be sold for $70 and then they will go for $80. I'm not sure will first uh, 100 batch will be available or not by the moment of release of this video. But anyway, I don't think that $10 makes much difference in the overall value of this uh, interesting portable device. So let's have a closer look. So let's do unboxing and uh, take a quick look at the design. We already seen this package before in the past and I can remind you it's a plastic box inside of a paper sleeve. And here it's uh, the same, we remove this sleeve. <laughs> Luckily this time a uh, plastic box survived mail delivery. So open this way and here is the device itself. On the on the top, so I have a silver version. Also, there uh, there is a blue one and the black one. That's what I know about. But probably there will be some other versions. And I hope that in future we'll see some limited versions like uh, Copper S9 that I own, or something like that. So let's see here. But most likely it will be just USB Type C cable and. C to A adapter for the USB and also some papers inside. So basic accessory set, uh, but not like something is really missing. Of course, it would be nice to have a case or uh, additional cables, but uh, uh, Hydis put a lot of cost in, inside of this device. So here it is. I really like that they used uh, design similar to AP80. And you know, I'm always a fan of uh, repetitive and uh, matching designs. For example, bo similar boxes, similar polygraphy through the uh, uh, company's lifetime. And I like when designs of uh, some things matches other things, like it happens with this S9 Pro Plus and AP80. So, you can see there are some bevels and uh, interesting edges and also glass like front and back uh, surface. Actually, it has protective film, but I won't uh, remove it now because I need to keep this surface for photos. So I will peel it when I'll be doing some photo. Here we have USB type C input uh, and here we have two outputs. Also, we have multicolored LED indicator that changes colors. And these two buttons that actually they remind that crowns on the re on the watches, but actually they're not rotating. There is a bit of 
rotation like wiggling but it's just two buttons so with recent uh, firmware buttons response for the volume and the simultaneous place will cycle through different filters and in general it's pretty convenient so as you can see nice small easy to use device and as for power consumption it's on the average level i'd say it's uh, more or less like uh, fuse ka13 so someday i will definitely buy that device to measure uh, usb current but still it's not here yet and of course about the sound uh, so previous uh, tunings of uh, Hydes were typically leaning towards the monitoring side of things with uh, uh, slightly added accent on the micro contrast and uh, sometimes and pretty energetic treble so natural or even bright sounding but here we we've got a step aside from the tuning it's still technical detailed with uh, focus on the micro contrast but it's uh, less uh, accented and also less energy is put uh, toward the treble area so it's a more balanced sound signature but uh, still for those who like slight hint of detailization so bass is pretty deep it goes uh, to maximum depth it's well controlled and there is no attempts to color something so basically here the main like decoration of the bass is a really good dynamics uh, that gives you nice impact and when it's present in the record you getting a good weight uh, this digital tonal converter sometimes uh, getting additional focus on the small nuances and details so instruments uh, sounds hyper realistic maybe it's not 100 uh, percent natural but pretty enjoyable type of signature especially it's uh, uh, really good fitting for the uh, so-called audiophilic records with uh, good uh, resolution with good details and of course it's fitting more uh, uh, natural instruments but actually with electronic music if you get uh, some good bassy earphones for example like mp145 which has a pretty good bass you're getting a nice amount of punch and impact too and uh, unsurprisingly these two devices came really good together because this one being pretty detailed and technical and the mp145 adds uh, uh, additional fun factor to the sound so first example it's a girl from Ipanema one of the countless versions of this uh, one of the most covered songs and uh, Rosa Passos and Ron Carter I really hope that I didn't make any mistakes really good version with uh, uh, proper amount of saudad and it's uh, pretty um, like modern recording with uh, you know subtitle but really well recorded bass it's not trying to uh, to grab your attention but at the same time it's pleasantly present giving that uh, um, foundation for the whole tune and of course for the vocal which is the main uh, main star here but it's easily to guess because it's world greatest audiophile vocal recordings and uh, this digital tonal converter does it really well with its uh, tendency to highlight small nuances a little bit so bass sound uh, really uh, palpable and natural but at the same time it's not pushed forward because there is no attempt to make some artificial accents Mid frequencies are detailed, uh, also slightly focused on the micro contrast, uh, making this uh, digital tonal converter really critical for the quality of records. Because if uh, there are big issues, they will be highlighted. It's not super critical, but uh, here better recordings or better masters, something like that, will be a really good plus. Nice uh, dynamics uh, that gives good emotions and uh, proper weight distribution, but when it's also present in the record really like uh, female vocals they are clean and saturated with emotions but male ones uh, 
a bit more depending on the quality of record. When they are greatly recorded, so there will be no problems. Imaginary stage is noticeably above average, it's pretty wide, depth is smaller than width, but good amount of airness and spaciousness will give you nice sense of uh, well-built stage. And uh, I've actually selected uh, pretty non-audiophilic track, it's uh, Mastodon, High Road, it's metal and not super brutal, but uh, pretty like forward one. And uh, luckily it's uh, nicely recorded for this genre, of course. And uh, this digital tonal converter sounds uh, pretty nicely, giving you nice sense of uh, guitars, aggression, vocal and all that nuances that uh, requires for such records that saturated with a lot of distortion and stuff like that. And the treble, as I've said, it's uh, pretty balanced, there is no attempts to boost it or to hide it, so it can be good news for treble phobic or bad news, it depends on the amount, or on the level of treble phobia. It's definitely not a model for those who don't want, uh, for those who want like soft and relaxed bass. Uh, but at the same time, if you like treble, it sounds natural with good extension and without any artificial boost, so uh, uh, you get sibilants only on with really sibilant tracks where it's unavoidable. So nice attacks and decays, really good balance, giving you nice sense of realism, and because of that uh, you get uh, good saturation with overtones, like basic ones and more extended. Really good uh, treble uh, extension, uh, but of course uh, r things like rich layering here is basically absent, but it's still something that we can expect from this area. But uh, in terms of overall development and overtones, treble does really great here. And uh, one another example. It's uh, Sentimental by Porcupine Tree. Good quality of record, uh, nice percussion that requires uh, pretty technical treble and this uh, digital tonal converter delivers it. Uh, so percussion doesn't sound like uh, constant uh, background noise or something like that. You really can distinguish different uh, types of that, uh, I don't know how to call them, that uh, separate uh, plates on the drum set. Uh, so that's about the sound probably. Uh, natural, slightly focused on the micro contrast, but at the same time with good dynamics and without uh, uh, overdoing with uh, that uh, focus on the micro contrast. Uh, really good low background noise even with sensitive earphones and a nice amount of power to drive like sensitive uh, full-size headphones without much problems. Of course it won't be the perfect choice for some high impedance models or tough to drive planars, but with adequate uh, sensitive models it will behave nicely. Speaking about the compressions, uh, so it's a noticeable step uh, for me at least from the S9 Pro because a bit less uh, bright, closer to balanced one, but still remaining uh, Heidi's signature focus on the micro contrast, but also doing it less that uh, helps this digital tonal converter sounds more balanced. Uh, I don't know, Fios K13. K13 offers much more power when uh, Source allows that and it can be like uh, benefit on the some uh, hard load, but with IMs it's just basically this one is slightly more focused on the micro contrast while KA13 closer to natural amount of that focus. And uh, Shanlin models in this price range they are quite the opposite offering you a bit of additional weight. So. To summarize, everything uh, really good continuation of uh, Heidi sound made uh, typically for their models, but on more mature level and adding here nice design and pretty competitive price, I think it's a really good offer in modern digital tonal converters world. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a great day.